for chronic pain management, the use of hands-on manual therapy has become quite a delicate topic, you know, and it sometimes even becomes a battle, especially on the social media, between uh, believers and non-believers about the use of hands-on manual therapy or whatever kind of passive treatment like myofascial treatments or whatever uh, for the treatment of pain and, and chronic pain in particular. Well, in general, when we want to apply modern pain science to clinical practice, there are a couple of things to consider in relation to that. First, probably the most important thing is that we should always keep in mind that we adapt our communication skills surrounding the passive technique towards our current understanding of pain and modern pain science. Second thing is of course always consider the, the effectiveness in terms of looking at the meta-analysis in this, the systematic literature reviews and their conclusions to consider where, whether it will benefit the patient sitting in front of you or lying on the treatment couch. Another thing is of course that it's, there's nothing against combining the two worlds, combining modern pain neuroscience and applying it during hands-on interventions because one of the only scientifically backed up explanatory uh, theories about why hands-on manual therapy would actually benefit uh, pain patients is that it activates the brain orchestrated top-down inhibitory control. So at least it provides temporary pain relief and you can further increase that temporary pain relief by adapting your communication surrounding the technique in line with our current understanding of chronic pain. And that's what Enrique Lusch from Valencia has clearly explained in a paper that he wrote for Manual Therapy Journal a couple of years ago and where he explained that when you want to combine modern pain neuroscience together with hands-on manual therapy you should first explain pain and then you should uh, combine it with hands-on manual therapy if you think it's appropriate for that specific patient sitting in front of you and of course you change the communication before, during and after the technique in line with what, how you have explained pain during the explained pain bit. And this implies that you no longer direct or adapt your hands-on manual technique based on the pain experience that the patient is having. And also that you do not suggest that the, the technique might be painful. No, on the contrary, you will explain to the patient that the technique will actually relieve pain and that you, it will activate brain orchestrated pain inhibitory systems. So this is just a quick uh, view on how we can adapt our communication technique surrounding the hands-on technique uh, to our current understanding of chronic pain. And most importantly, if you consider hands-on treatment uh, an important part of the treatment of the particular patient sitting in front of you, please keep in mind that the passive treatments should never be the dominating factor within your treatment approach. The, the dominant factors or the dominant parts of the treatment should always be emphasizing self-efficacy, self-management techniques, lifestyles, lifestyle changes. And if you focus on those aspects of your treatment, then you can combine it probably with some hands-on stuff in selected cases but it should never be the core business of your treatment, of your management program for chronic pain patients.